on the other hand there is also so much of excitement from astronomical data which is uh, temporal where the time varying some kind of time variation in the data is observed uh, one might be uh, of course supernova explosion if there is any data pre and post explosion so such uh, visuals would certainly be very very interesting to incorporate from actual data in, but these would be perhaps less in number they can just be incorporated by hand uh, that is for those where there is pre explosion imagery and post explosion imagery from a given region on the other hand if we take the entire database of supernova or supernova rem supernova remnants for instance already incorporated name and age at the same time uh, we may wish to incorporate a database in from our own procedure or so that it can be updated uh, continuously and uh, then uh, database like uh, gamma ray burst to some extent this has been incorporated in our planetary near at delhi but there the uh, data was added almost by hand but now the pro process is underway uh, with working with another student where the data putting this data in the dome can be done through software coding so that it can always be used to uh, update the database now in this kind of uh, visualization on the one hand at the moment the static we have a static visualization simply locating where all gamma ray bursts are in the sky but if you want to show the entire data which is available about this in a kind of a more vibrant way then we may want to show uh, the actual variations in intensities with time and so on and then we have to implement this in a parallel manner so this kind of coding becomes much more complex and the process has only just been started at our planetarium and we are in the process of trying to implement it what is being done currently is work uh, with uh, Devan Chagarwal uh, who was a student at ISA Tiruvannathapura who implemented the TGSS database for us at the planetarium uh, the ongoing work currently is trying to implement the entire database of pulsar average profiles from the European pulsar network database and here we have intensity variations of pulsars which are averaged over several periods. So we have uh, a number of these average profiles and so uh, currently what is under process is trying to uh, visualize this, visualize this in some way as a dot in the sky whose brightness is varying scale with respect to this average profile but now not just for one pulsar but for all pulsars happening parallel so once again it's a complex coding process which is in the way uh, underway to be sorted so this kind of visualizations on the one hand static visualizations of large database of from surveys from different frequencies and on the other hand time variations of different kind of interesting astronomical objects at once again in different frequency ranges uh, would be a kind of a, a very powerful database to have in one visualization system in particular in a planetarium kind of environment of a visualization system because that um, that always helps this is from outreach point of view uh, it helps enormously for anyone to get a um, for a beginner to get a good feel of what's out there in the sky and uh, in uh, terms of inputting any of astronomical data into planetarium kind of software um, on the one hand for instance if you are putting in any solar system data then uh, we would be looking at its given Keplerian elements and incorporating them within the software that we are working with uh, in the manner which is prescribed for that uh, specific software and uh, so that would be one just uh, like many amateur astronomers have been doing this whenever there is a new comet appearing and uh, so they have been sharing with each other using uh, this kind of um, procedures. So this is one way 
at the moment mainly the project currently being undertaken at delhi involves more the kind of all sky survey data or other time series kind of data which is uh, there is so much of this kind of data which is available and becoming more and more available and there is a kind of an explosion of this kind of data which is happening so if it is any of these kind of data which one wishes to incorporate to some extent uh, there is on the one hand we put them in uh, in the way that they are observed from earth so using traditional positional astronomy kind of coordinate framework so we should of course the natural one to use here then would be the equatorial coordinate system and uh, this particular data let us say if it is uh, an image a fits file then incorporating it into the planetarium software typically may involve converting into some other form of image files which can be incorporated at that location at that right ascension and declination and uh, for those of you who may be just getting into this kind of work there are a number of um, number of videos available on youtube which will help one understand these uh, we, these specific coordinate systems for completeness let me just briefly mention that uh, these are coordinates centered center of the earth and uh, two dimensional coordinate coordinates here uh, wherein the distance in the line of sight is not incorporated which of course one has to uh, also put in uh, when one is visualizing not just earth based views but um, others but to begin with uh, let us think of this just earth based views and in this case uh, this is the coordinate equatorial coordinate system in which we would be incorporating some of this data so uh, this is coordinate system where centered center of the earth and uh, you take the equator throw it up into the sky and that is the celestial equator so from the center of the earth and celestial equator perpendicular to that wherever an object is in the sky drop a perpendicular from that point in the celestial sphere which is again a, a kind of uh, a football around our uh, around the center of the earth at one uniform distance so in that framework so drop a perpendicular from the point to the equator from the point on the sphere on the sphere along the sphere drop a perpendicular to the equator and the angle that then this is hap this is uh, making at the center of the earth this perpendicular angular distance from the celestial equator is the declination of any celestial object and along the equator in one specific direction uh, the angle between this uh, celestial object the perpendicular drop from the celestial object to one reference point will be the right ascension now what is this reference point the reference point comes about from two uh, crossing points of another arc in the sky which is the annual apparent path of the sun called the ecliptic and from any given location on earth of course this its relative orientation will keep changing over the, over time whereas the celestial equator from any one location it will be in uh, one given direction in the sky and remain so so now this two there are these are two great arcs around on the celestial sphere and they cross at two points these are the two equinox points and there is the equinox the march equinox point where the sun is at that position uh, on the ecliptic in the, on the March equinox time and starting from that point on the equator this crossing point moving eastwards gives you the angle right ascension so these two angles right ascension and declination are uh, defining globally the uh, position of an object in the sky centered on the earth and on an imaginary kind of a sphere uniform distance there is of course also involved the 
distance in the line of sight direction of that specific object. But when we are looking at earth based views, we are looking only at this. But more complex visualizations would then need to look also at this distance aspect.